this is Marvin Glotfelty. I'm a hydrogeologist and well driller from Arizona, here to give you another industry connected video from the National Groundwater Association. Today, I want to talk about the physics of well development. This will be a two part series uh, because there's a lot to incorporate in this discussion, but it's good for us to understand the physics of well development. So, so here in this diagram we see on the uh, well screen and we're going to do some development of that well screen so first of all the fundamental purpose of the well development is when we have groundwater entering the well while we're pumping this wall cake this brown line here is what will impede that uh, the formation is the pro the flow properties are as good as we're going to get we're not going to improve that the filter pack is much higher porosity and permeability than the formation, and so is the effective permeability of the well screen. So this redu reduction in flow comes from this wall cake here. Now, wall cake is good while we're drilling the well because it stabilizes the borehole, but it's a problem when we're producing water. So we want to remove that so we can get the full amount of groundwater that we're pumping and have an efficient well. So number of ways to do this, three common ones are swab, uh, reciprocating rubbers up and down the well, simultaneously airlifting, high velocity jetting um, to break down and remove the, uh, the wall cake, and then pumping and then alternately surging, kicking in the clutch and letting that water in the column pipe surge back down the well. So in all three of these, what we're actually doing, whether it's mechanical or hydraulic or what, we're actually moving water is what's causing is what's reaching the borehole face. So we're moving water outward and then inward, both directions. And so that is the physics that we're talking about. So here's a close-up diagram of that filter pack. And when we are pushing water out, that means we have a pressure head inside the well higher than the pressure head in the formation. So that of course pushes water out. And the alternately, when we're pulling water in, whether it's pumping or airlifting or for whatever reason, it means we've now reversed those where the pressure head inside the well is lower than the pressure head outside the well. So here's a diagram from uh, Dr. Herman Bauer's book, and this illustrates this. This formula you see here is, is a form of the Darcy equation. It's uh, the V is Darcy velocity. K is hydraulic conductivity. All of this in the numerator here basically is the gradient. So H1 and Z1 are one uh, pressure head. And then at the lower end, we have Z2 and H2 over here. So all of this is just the gradient. And that's divided by L. And L is the pathway along which the water is moving. So if we apply this to our well development, now we can imagine uh, a pressure head on the inside of the well screen at a higher pressure and on the outside at a lower pressure. So that's the gradient. But in this case, Dr. Bauer showed us Z's being different with the heads being the same. We have the opposite. We have the pressure heads being higher and lower with our elevations being the same. Same result though. We have higher pressure on the inside and lower pressure on the outside of the filter pack. And that's moving across a horizontal line L. So we're looking at straight along a pathway from the inside of the well where we're developing energy moving to the borehole face. So this is uh, going to be moving at this Darcy velocity. Okay. So that's that's uh, important as you'll see for us to consider in well development how effective will it be. Other thing to really look at is the hydraulic conductivity. Now that's not controlled out in the formation, but we're talking about artificial filter pack where we do control it. So we can select any material that's appropriate for our particular well, our particular area, and so on. But some of the things that will impact that hydraulic conductivity of the filter pack is the grain size. Will it be really fine? Will it be really coarse? Uh, will it be well-rounded or somewhat angular? Uh, is it well sorted? If it's poorly sorted, usually the fine grain portion of it will be the effective hydraulic conductivity. So we want to just be mindful of that if we have poorly sorted material. And then 
by some probably minor amount, but there is some impact from the rugosity. That's to say how smooth is the surface. And this, this example here is manufactured glass beads. Those, um, of course, are very smooth compared to quarried material, which is all the others. But uh, there is an impact there. So um, we, we should keep in mind that this Darcy velocity we've been talking about, B here, is not true velocity because that's the time it takes to go from point one to point two here across. But the actual movement of the water has to move through the pore spaces around this sediment grains, the filter pack grains, or like shown here. And so that means that we need to then divide by porosity so we get an actual higher, slightly higher um, velocity of the real water moving. And that velocity is important because as you'll see, it is what relates to the actual work we're doing. So the work that we're doing to remove the wall cake can be expressed as kinetic energy. Kinetic energy equals mass times velocity squared divided by two. So, so we have a relationship between kinetic energy and velocity that is a squared relationship. So if we double the velocity, we will quadruple the kinetic energy. Similarly, we cut the velocity in half, we're going to reduce the kinetic energy by a factor of four. So it's important to make note of that, of that uh, velocity. So let's look at an example. And everything we're gonna, we're gonna look at the, the, uh, the, the um, mathematical formula that I showed earlier, um, which is the Darcy velocity here, but we will keep everything equal. So our, one only thing we're worrying about is a four inch versus five inch annulus, so only L will change. So first let's look at a four inch annulus and we'll say that the, uh, the <clears throat> to keep the math simple, K times all this numerator equals 40. So 40 divided by four equals 10 and 10 up here squared is gonna give us a kinetic energy of 100. All right, that's just a, unitless uh, value, but let's compare that with everything else being the same, but we're going to now switch from a four inch annulus to a five inch annulus. Do the same math. We have 40 divided by five instead of divided by four. So now the value of velocity is eight and eight squared is 64 kinetic un energy units. So we will reduce by increasing from a four to five inch annulus, keeping everything else the same by about a third the amount of energy that we're really applying to remove the uh, borehole, the, the wall cake. So this is important for us to consider. Is that to say that we need to go really tiny on uh, the annulus widths? No, it's not to say that because we don't want to have sand invasion. We need to have room for trimmy pipes and other annular tubing goods and things like that. So it depends on the overall well design. But this is just something not to ignore, something to keep in mind. I will uh, follow up with some more information on part two of this physics of well development uh, discussion, and then uh, we'll talk to you next time. Thank you.